Ultramarathons are on the rise at the moment and preparing for your first will be unlike anything you've done before. Here are a few things you should be aware of before entering your first. Now these events will push you beyond your previous comfort zones and limits in physical endurance and mental resilience. But that's what attracts us to these events in the first place, right? Whether you're entering your first ultra or looking to avoid previous mistakes, I've learnt a lot through the many ultras and three 100 milers I've completed to this point. So today I'm going to be sharing some of my tips with you to help prepare for you for your first ultra as best as possible. So the definition of an ultra is anything over standard marathon distance, which is 26.2 miles. Common distances can be 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 100 miles, or even further during multi-day events. This can also be over differing terrains like road, trail, mountain, or even running track. Just remember, we're not here, well, I'm certainly not, to win or set any records. We're just looking to survive. Do your best and enjoy the ultramarathon experience by testing yourself and learning how to improve along the way. So you've picked your race, you've entered, and now you're looking to prepare and run it. How do we do that? Let's find out. Number one, train the terrain. To maximize your potential and enjoyment, do some research and look at the race profile and elevation and incorporate similar aspects into your training plan. If it's flat trails that you're running, find something similar like canal paths for example. If it's hilly, head to the hills and focus on hill running and power hiking. And do this after a normal run or as a back-to-back -back weekend as well to simulate and stress those tired legs. It will pay off hugely. If it's a mountain race, get used to walking uphill, not running. Train with poles if you prefer and look at recovering during your descents. If you can, try and recce some of the race route in advance. Knowing the exact terrain you'll be running will help on race day and be a great mental boost. Next tip is taper properly and rest well beforehand. Manage your volume and intensity in the weeks leading up to your race. Don't do too much too soon or experiment with any new nutritional ideas. Stick with what you know and rest accordingly. Hydration and eating is important. Drink plenty of fluids and water in the week leading up to the race and steadily increase the amount of food that you're taking in. Be realistic with your goals and that is to complete the race whilst enjoying it. Mentally prepare, be strong. You can go further than you think, always. One step at a time, one mile at a time. Break down the distance into manageable sections that you think you can manage and tick them off as you go past. Don't give up. This is time to see what you've made of. You've put the training in and this is what you've designed it to be. You can do it. You must know you're going to find it tough before you start. It's going to be difficult, brutal, at times feel impossible. It will be hard but if you want to do it, you will and you must keep that mentality. Tell yourself you'll finish this race even before it starts. Visualize yourself at the finish line. Have key mental prompts, mantras, quotes or pictures ready for when it gets tough so you can draw on them in your mind and focus on that to forget about the inevitable pain. The next tip is pacing. Drop your overall average pace. Slow down significantly. It's a long way and long time to be on your feet. Think about your easy running pace and then maybe add one or two minutes per kilometer to that pace and practice running in your training at that speed. It's a lot harder than it sounds. As an example, in my last 100 mile race, I calculated that running, on average, 14 minute miles would allow me to complete the race in under 24 hours. That's far slower than any of my training runs, and it feels very unnatural, trust me, but it did work. Start the race slower than you think. Don't get caught up in the moment, you'll regret it later on, as fatigue will set in earlier, and you'll be in a difficult situation with a long way still to go. Your pace should be based around the running that you're used to doing, the terrain that you'll be running and any previous similar runs. Do some research and look at the previous results or experiences of others. Look at the race profile and elevation and incorporate this into your training plan. With an ultramarathon it's a long distance, it's a long time out running and it's a long time on your body. So you need to keep fueling it. Eat on the go and throughout the race. There's plenty of aid stations throughout the course and plenty of variety in what you can have, but stick to what you know and what you like. This is not the time to experiment with new tastes, food or hydration strategies. Eat little and often, 
but keep the fluids coming and remember water can actually get boring and tasteless. So try and mix up your palate with electrolytes, energy powders and fruit juice. But also again make sure you've trained with this so it's not a shock to your system on the day. Keep your stops to a minimum. Be efficient and organised as you go into an aid station. Have a plan in advance as to what you'll be doing, what you'll eat, what you drink, what you might change. Try and resist sitting down for too long a period of time. This will make your legs seize up and getting started again that more difficult. It's really easy to spend one or two hours in aid stations over the course of an ultramarathon. So make sure that you have a plan and you try and stick to it, minimising the time that you're in there. It all adds up over the course of the race. Walk the hills. Ultramarathons are long distance races. The terrain will constantly be changing. Practice power hiking up hills during your training period. Focus on keeping your heart rate down so there's no racing up hills. Think of hills as a small recovery period or a period of time where you can take on some extra fueling or hydration. Crisis management. Have a plan B or a C or even a D. Knowing what to do or having a plan at least when things get tough or go wrong will be the make or break moment when things begin to fall apart. Whether it's managing your feet or blisters or dealing with a trip, slip or fall, you need to have a plan as to how you're going to mentally cope with the situation. What if the weather suddenly changes and catches you out? Are you prepared? Do you know where your kit is? Can you access it quickly? An example of this would be my 50 mile lakes in a day event in 2019. I was halfway through the race and had just come off the mountains heading down into Ambleside when I slipped and cut my knee open pretty badly. As you do with these situations you get up quickly and try and carry on but having looked at it I started to feel faint and I knew I had to sit down and then lie down raising my legs so I wouldn't pass out. Luckily there were some walkers nearby who came over to help and I made it down to Ambleside. Now this was the make or break moment for me. I needed to decide whether I was going to finish the race there or continue the next 26 miles and finish the race. I spent a longer time than I had anticipated at that aid station and that was due to changing my shoes, cleaning the wound and looking at how my knee was moving under this new injury. In the end I really wanted to complete the race so I managed to run the remaining 26 miles with this injury. In the subsequent days following of course it had swelled up but there was no permanent injury and it's recovered fully now. But those are the situations that can really throw you off during the race and you need to mentally decide whether you want it enough to carry on, whether your injury allows you to carry on um, and see how you deal with it in that scenario. Next is buddy up. As the race progresses everyone will settle into their own rhythm and pace. You begin to notice you're running with the same people as you move through the course. The same faces will pop up at aid stations. Someone might be quicker than you uphill but you're quicker downhill so you keep leapfrogging each other. See these as bonding moments. These runners are not your competitors, but your buddies, your teammates, your supporters and motivators, and you're the same for them. Help each other. This distracts you from the uncomfortable and gets you through the dark nights by torchlight and can create friends for life. Remember, everyone is there for the same reason and is like-minded like you. And that's survive at all costs, get to the end and complete the race. Everyone is going through their own emotional battles, feeling the same pains and mental decisions. So don't ever feel intimidated. Use your fellow runners to keep each other going. It really does work. And the final tip from me is try and enjoy the views. Enjoy where you're running. It's likely it's somewhere new and most trail ultras are in beautiful locations with amazing views and terrain. So stop, take in the moment, take some photographs and remember the positives. And when you get to the end, just remember what you've done to get there. You've done all the training, you're mentally prepared and you can do it, regardless of how you feel during those dark times. Whether it's in the pain cave, the hurt locker, anything you want to call it. Draw on those experiences from your training. Visualise that finish line and do your best and you will get there. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been of value to you. If so, please give this video a like and also check out some of my other trail running videos. Let me know in the comments any of your tips or experiences. If you've done an ultra before, in the past, or learned something from a previous race, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.